<laughs> okay, it's recording. All right, great. Hey, everybody. Thank you for coming to this week's Tipples Wine of the Week tasting every Tuesday. This is Elizabeth and Jeff Vaudre, and uh, appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, we're going to have another great wine this week, really kind of a fun, different wine. Uh, we'll address the elephant in the room. Why am I wearing sunglasses? I injured my eye. It looks hideous, and the good news is it's only going to take about a month to heal. So there may be a bit of this that you're seeing. Maybe yeah. I'll have some fun with it and get some different sunglasses. I mean, something. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. I need to come up with a better story, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. I'll try. I'll get an eye patch. I'll try that. So, so th we, we were talking about different things he could do tonight. So this was one of them. Right. And the other was, I, I said, well, you could do a Harriet Hogs it and just be like, out oh, that's of true. frame. I, I'm just gonna be like, all right, everybody, look, here we go. <laughs> this is fine. That's right. There you go. Yeah, yeah learn from me. We're yeah. all good. <laughs> Yeah, eye infection. Uh, was it a left hook, uh, Elizabeth? What was it? Yeah, I, I mean, he re just really ticked me off. And, you know. I bet, yeah. You know, it only takes well, so much of that. I pulled like a Three Stooges, though, just, you know, poke <laughs> me yeah, off. Yeah, true. Well, the sad thing was I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> All right. Anyway, enough of that, guys. So right. this week, we are going back to Argentina again. Look, I'm sorry. I love Argentinian wine. And they have so many wonderful ones. So we are going back to Mendoza. We're having a red blend, Malbec dominant. What? Um, but what's really cool about this guy is it's an Italian crossover style of wine. Um, the Renaissance Milamore, uh, Bodegas Renaissance uh, Milamore. It's a delicious red blend uh, based on the Italian style of Amarone. It's the Appassimento method, which is drying the grapes a little bit basically like a raisinating thing? yes raisinating okay. the grapes uh, about 30 percent of their weight getting the extra about 30 percent of the water leaves okay. intensifying the grapes for when they press it so uh amarone because of this obviously you're going to reduce the amount of juice you're getting it makes it more expensive um amarones therefore start around 60 dollars and up this guy is two things a much more reasonably priced b but amazing delicious uh to me it's got very similar quality levels to a lot of amarone um but it's just from is it it's more reasonably priced because it's not amarone it's not from italy so they don't have the established like reputation already yes. or okay yeah yeah I, and to me that would be why i mean okay. obviously they don't tell you exactly why mm -hmm. but it is from you know it's from argentina it's okay. not from amarone in Veneto in Italy. So they can't hang their hat on those names. Regions yeah. that, okay. right. Well, it's like, um, you know, we had that Obsidian Ridge mm -hmm. cab, right? Mm -hmm. Obsidian Ridge, it was in Lake County. It had all the muscle of a Napa cab, right? but, but it, it was a good 20 bucks less a bottle. Because it's than not from Napa, been. right? the name. Yep. Yep. So mm -hmm. there you go. So I think this is an excellent buy, a delicious wine. And I hope you guys agree with me. And let's begin talking about it. Let's start with Tell me when you want me to Go share. Go ahead and pull it up and we'll, uh, I'll talk okay. about temperatures. So I like to serve this guy at 60 degrees to get started. I put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes to let it get a light chill. This guy's got 92 points from James Suckling and Robert Palmer yeah. uh, gave it 90. Uh, so solid, very nice points um, and um, recommendations from from a wine tasters in the know. Food pairings, braised beef, pot roast, foie gras, grilled portobello, mushroom marinated in balsamic, chocolate and walnuts. By the way, I thought this was kind of fun. This is my list, right? Mm -hmm. This is my list for pairings. Mm -hmm. When I looked at the official tech sheet from mm -hmm. them, <laughs> the braised beef, the grilled portobello, the chocolate, and the walnuts were all on there. So I, awesome. I felt fairly proud. So you were like, oh, pat myself That's right. I, I thought I was kind of a little badass <laughs> on that. So it's almost like I've learned a few things. So um, do you want me to keep sharing or? Mm, no, let's go back and talk to each other okay. face to face uh, about right. our initial thoughts on this guy. So this wine is a blend. Uh, it's 45% Malbec. It's 40% Cab Solve. 10% Bonarda and 5% Cab Franc. 15%. The aroma. The aroma is just amazing. Right. It is. I mean, it's 
very evident. It's just, it, it just presents itself very quickly. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say I like, I, I feel like very like Blackberry-ish initially, mm -hmm. some sort of like berry or fruity initially, but it smells very, it's, it's great. I feel like it's very balanced mm -hmm. between yes. tannins and like something right. more fruity, but I, I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you guys like it. Um, I agree. There's a lot of nice spice coming out on this guy on the nose. It invites you in. Kind of an anise spicy. Maybe that's what we're looking for. A little bit of a combination of baking spice and pepper. Peppercorn. Very dark fruit. Um, you know, just like Linda was saying, you, know, you can go black cherry, blueberry, blackberry. You know, it's, a, it's kind of a, a, kind of a, a group of, you know, mm -hmm. dark the, the, you know, they'll say, oh, it's the dark berries. And, and, and for a reason, you know, a good reason. It, it, it is a lot like that combination. The, yeah. um, <clears throat> oh, I, I'm glad that, so I, um, we, we opened it at like 7.40, maybe 7.35. Mm. And I opened it kind of last sip for a second. I took a sip and I was like, uh-oh. Um, but then like 20 minutes later she came by and she took a sip and she's like oh this is great and i was like i was relieved to hear uh because i i, I thought it was like overwhelming at the very front um and it is settled in so nicely what like 30 minutes yeah 30 35 minutes later um oh. it is really opened up um so it's like it, it, it it's so well balanced i think for having such very strong characteristics. And, and that is the fun. You need to start with what would have been a very tight wine if you mm -hmm. do this, or else it's just going to be an over-extracted mess. Mm -hmm. So it had to start with some real tightness um, in order to have and you know a nice amount of tannin. Um, it finishes dry and a little acidic. So with a freshness on the fruit. Sure. Even though on the way in, it is so, you know, got that nice raisinated dark intensity. The last sentence on the back of the label says to open it at least one hour before serving. Mm -hmm. We did that. We opened it 30 minutes uh, and then stuck it in the fridge for 30 minutes open. Mm. Nice. nice. Yeah, I like it's doing that. well settled by now. Mm. All right. That's one of my favorite things is, well, you need 30 minutes to chill it in the fridge anyway to get it down to 60. Mm -hmm. Just pop it open ahead of time. Let that be right. your opening time. Well, and, and they popped it open 30 minutes before yeah. even sticking it in the fridge. Which so. was a good mm -hmm. idea. Well, and, it, and then it got even better in the glass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It got it like opened up really nicely within ten minutes. Definitely. Definitely. It's yeah, so it's, good. It's, it's a friendly bottle. Yeah. You know, it doesn't it doesn't keep itself hidden too long, and it kind of it, I enjoy the process with this wine. I I do I think it's just a very and I found that with most Amarone styles as well with that appassimento method, mm -hmm. it adds it creates this velvety, highly expressive wine but all in a very friendly way. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, baking spices, anise, rich fruit, nice tannins, um, acidity and dryness on the finish to keep it something you want to keep sipping. It's not in any way cloying, in my opinion. No. Um, I'm glad, uh, so far so good on uh, the reactions to the wine. It's it's definitely a unique, interesting style. It's the only one I've come across from. I really from. like the baking spices on the nose. I don't blame you. They're, mm -hmm. they're delicious. That's it. But I feel like because it is so smooth, I feel like this would be a good, and maybe it's, I'm wrong, but like intro to red wine or intro to the bigger red wines for people that okay. don't drink red wine, mm -hmm. you know, like for people that aren't giant cab drinkers and stuff, sure. I think this might be a good intro to, because it is so smooth and such a nice balance. Yeah. I, I you know, go it's with not that. Yeah. attacking you. Sure. Yeah, it is. It's got a nice, it's a rich velvety wine, mm -hmm. but it does have really good structure mm -hmm. still. I mean, this is not, this is not just a, a you know, some flabby fruit bomb in right. any way. It's got a mm -hmm. lot going on. Um, honestly, there's a bit, you know, a lot of the, a, a bit of that, that anise quality comes along with a um, kind of a, a volcanic soil, um, you know, that obsidian ridge sure. effect, you know, that nice minerality mm -hmm. is coming through. Because what we're talking about here is it's grown in the alluvial fan of um, of the runoff from these mountain peaks. 
um, that come down near the rivers. And so Should we we'll talk about that a little bit, yeah. But it is a uh, highly mineral content. So let's go ahead and look at the, uh, let's take a look. First, we're gonna look at the apostamento style. So here's a picture as they begin to resonate, which you see. Yeah, you can see the shrivelly. Yes, yeah, they, they're little shrivels. <laughs> they, about 30%, 30, 33%, you know, about a third of the weight of the grapes is evaporated as they dry these things. They're getting, they're, you know, releasing water content only and intensifying the grapes. And there's the traditional mat that they're on and the mm -hmm. air flows through it. The really cool nights in Mendoza help this to happen without them rotting. So let's say mm -hmm. you were looking for, let's say, you know, you own a vineyard mm -hmm. and you are looking for long hang time and everything's going great, but you get an uncharacteristic rainstorm Yes, that plumps up your grapes. Yes. Could you then do this <laughs> to get rid of some of the water? Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. Okay. No, it's going to cost you time and that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't have the facilities for it, it could be problematic. But yes, that should be something that that would be a technique that could help if you had an unexpected late season rain mm -hmm. and it diluted your beautiful, intense right. grapes. Yeah, just, you know, resonate them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. So um, uh, the origin of the style is from North Eastern Italy, mm. Veneto. Mm. Um, I'm a huge fan of that area. We've had a lot of wines from there, and we will have more. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but not next week. Anyway, um, so Veneto, Italy, Amarone, um, the baby Amarone, as I like to call it, is called Ripasso. So what they'll do is they, so imagine you take these grapes, right, and you raisinate some, you make an Amarone out of it or you make this guy out of it, the, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the Milamore. Now you still have some intense leftover grapes, right? So if you took some that you did not raisinate mm -hmm. and just made a nice dry wine out of those, and then you rinsed that through these, then you're going to get some of that extra character out of it. That's called ripasso, a second pass. Okay. They're repassing over the juice. So in Amarone, and we, we don't see this really in Amarone, uh, in um, Argentina, but in Amarone, they have Amarone and then they have Ripasso. And Ripasso is basically the baby, re, you know, passed over version, uh, second passing to get some of that character for half the price, um, which is a great way to get into. And I highly recommend if you want to work your way up to Amarone, which is one of my favorite wine styles in the world, start with a Ripasso and then work your way up to an Amarone, which is gonna be 60 plus dollars uh, on, on those those wines, which we'll drink one here when we do a special occasion wine. Sure. Because- so I Jeff, are they uh, drying these grapes at room temp? They are putting them, usually it's outside. In fact, almost always in every, uh, almost every situation I've read about, it's outdoors. So in this case, we're talking about really cool desert nights uh, up in Mendoza that allows them to raisinate gently. So these must not be real sweet grapes because of the, like the Rieslings where they leave in the field to dry to make the ice fine, concentrates the sweetness. Is there it, some similarity there or not? It's, it's a different process. So like uh, with the Rieslings, they're leaving them in the fields to gain more and more sugar. You're right. In this case, they're taking it to the, ripe, the ripeness level they want and then cutting it off, getting them off the vines and then raisinating them. But you're right, rather than leaving them, say, if you want to make a nice oscillasa, you leave it out there to continue to ripen, get more sugar and that kind of a thing on there. So this is a, it's a more balanced approach. Uh, let's see here, Passamento. Next slide. Yes, next slide, please. All right, so, uh, well, I guess I kind of covered this, but. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so here we are up in uh, drying the grapes from Veneto. 30% of the water lending balance richness and a glossy texture. <laughs> I call it glitter. No. Um, so acidity decreases while reservatrol and glycerin levels increase. Isn't the right. reservatrol the thing that we want? Like, isn't yes. that the good thing? That is, it's um, yeah. an antioxidant. Okay. Extra good for you. All right, cool. 
So we're not drinking tonight. This is a health food drink. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are all welcome. We're going to live forever. <laughs> <Linda's> happy. <laughs> but it does. So here's one of the things that you have to take into account though, because you're talking about it reduces acidity. Mm -hmm. If so, if you went with, if you started with an, an, a very, like Jerry was talking about, a very ripe grape that had almost no acidity left, and then you reduce the acidity further, mm -hmm. there would be no freshness left on this. Sure. It would be very much, and I've had these vine, these wines, it would have something that is, you get a lot of date and fig. Okay. Which is not bad. I just prefer to have a little freshness left in the fruit mm -hmm. to make me want to have that next sip. Sure. Otherwise it can be a, it can begin to verge on like a dry dessert wine experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next. Yes, please. All right, so Amarone, so here's some of the, uh, because we are doing the Amarone style, I figured, well, let's take a look at, you know, cherry, brown sugar and chocolate. So um, you can get a nice chocolatey quality here. Mm. Especially because chocolate is one of the qualities from Malbec anyway, okay. so it's already there. Mm -hmm. The brown sugar to me is expressed more in that baking spice. I wouldn't say, see, brown sugar makes me think about sweetness right. and I'm not getting sweetness on this mm -hmm. wine, but I do get a really nice baking spice and anise. Sure. So body is heavy. So that makes sense. I mean, here we have, so acidity, medium, mm -hmm. which you, you're you gonna want that because it could easily, if you do this wrong, there's gonna be no acidity. It's gonna be a totally different beast. Body is heavy, mm -hmm. tannin, medium, which we've got a nice velvety presence, but it right. is present. Right. Uh, dryness, yeah, this is a dry wine. Mm -hmm. um, it is not sweet. And alcohol, 14 to 16, we're at 15. So yeah. bam, right there. So. I mean, 15 is... That's a nice mm. ABV. It is. That, <laughs> that'll get you where you want to go. <laughs> there you go. Next one. Please. All right. So let's look at where we are uh, having these grapes grown. We are down here, kind of right in the dead center of what is awesome. Um, so we're in Mendoza, uh, right on along Coast the edge of, of the Alps. Mm -hmm. uh, Alps. Andes. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at Italy earlier today. <laughs> Um, so, right. So right in the border with Chile, inland, not a maritime influence to keep it cool. The coolness in the evening, which helps the, the grapes retain character rather than become overripe from the hot days, comes from the cool air of the Andes rushing down once the sun sets. Um, here we are. So we're in Mendoza. And within Mendoza, we are in, where's, where's my note? Here we go, we're down here. The Lujan, this area, we're mm -hmm. right here in the center here. There's a river that actually, there's a river that runs through it, <laughs> uh, which is coming from the runoff from the Alps. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're pulling their irrigation from there? Like yes. The, okay. Mm -hmm. So see Lujan de Coyo, mm -hmm. this is that area right in the dead center here. And okay. here's the river coming down with runoff from the Alps. Um, that's one of the things we talked about. Uh, they get, it's it's a desert. It, mm -hmm. is a, it is a mountainous area desert. They are able to leave their grapes on the vine to get as much character as they want during the growing season with no worries that they're going to get an unexpected rain to dilute the grapes. Huh. And they can irrigate very inexpensively because all of this water is running off the snowmelt from the Andes, as opposed to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just an ideal place to control exactly what you want to do. Almost no issue with insects in this area because it is so dry. Uh, it allows them to become sustainable and organic very easily. It just lends itself to be one of the greatest places to grow wine in the world. I feel like we hear that a lot when we're in South America, that they're sustainable. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, I feel like almost every time we're here, it's a sustainable vineyard. So. Yeah. It, and like I said, it, it's because it lends itself to it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not as difficult as it is in certain other areas in the world. Uh, France is a much more difficult time, even though they do it constantly. Really? I saying, many of the French are effectively organic. Even if they haven't gotten the official seal of approval, okay. they are organic. Um, so it happens a lot more 
I'd say the place where it happens the least is probably California. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Next slide. Yes, please. All right, so here we go. Up against the Andes, um, a good old Mendoza is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really want to go there. Yeah. So there, um, where am I here? The, uh, the um, longhand, uh, the soil on these guys, uh, oh. basically because it's runoff, it's a combination of it's uh, silt and a lot of pe pebbles, fast drying, uh, you know, uh, the water fat passes through very quickly mm -hmm. and not a lot of nutrition to the soil. No, heck, it's a desert. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of nutrition in the soil. And uh, but nice minerality, which pulls up into the quality of the grapes. So it was just, it was made for this purpose to give these grape vines struggle. <laughs> so they provide for us this wonderful wine. Next one, please. Okay, okay so here we have a picture. Um, like I said, we just got that nice, nice mineral, mineral, mm -hmm. high mineral content soil that does not retain uh, a lot of water mm -hmm. and uh, a nice, nice uh, pebbly and uh, works out great. Next. Here's the irrigation. Uh, you can see, I love that you can see the source mm -hmm. in this picture going all the way to where they just, they, you know, created channels to, to irrigate and yeah, they can, they can do play as they please on that. Yeah. This is a winter time when they're not really growing the vines, but they're, they're nurturing the vines to get them really healthy for the uh, summer. They're not going to give them all this water while they're growing the grapes. No. No, otherwise they would just get too much water, get too plump. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So they just like block off the channels or something. Mm -hmm. That they do. All right, so uh, Renisser, Bodegas Renisser, 74 acres approximately of a state owned uh, vineyards. They uh, were established in 2005 by Patricio Reich. Um, he's been in the wine industry in Chile since the 1980s and then wanted to do something high end of his own. Talk to his family and they all said we're in. Um, to that extent, um, Christian Reich is now running the winery. So it was, it's, it is a family endeavor. So they created this very Tuscan tower look, but with very modern equipment and modern practices in, um, in all their winemaking. Yeah, it, the look is, the aesthetic looks like, except for like the background look, but the aesthetic right. looks like it could be in Italy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's kind of amusing to me because it, it's based on a Tuscan look, mm -hmm. but the style is based on Venetian. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Tuscany, but anyway, yeah, that's all right. Different parts of, yeah. and, and You know what? It's, it's all comes together to make beautiful wine. So good for them. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and move forward. Here we go. This, these are their vineyards and <laughs> the view from them. It's like, oh my gosh, I want to be there so much. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so they do, um, they don't, it's like, what are we talking about? 74 acres, they actually make enough wine that they have to buy from their neighbors as well. Uh, but they're all, it's a very close knit community. It's very interactive. Um, uh, and that's where they, so in order to get enough juice, they, they actually purchase. So it's a community involvement mm -hmm. situation. It's a very small area that they're within. Right there, it may be in the center of Mendoza, but this is a very small community in the end, and they're very important to it um, and very community oriented. Like I've seen a lot of them from that area, so yes. I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the vines in the estate part are seventy years old. Oh wow! Yeah, so seventy is about as old as they get, but that's old. You know, that's that's some good old vine. In that's there. as old as they get. And for them. Oh, okay. For them, you know, okay. their oldest are about 70 years old, but that is a good old vine right okay. there. That's uh, nicely done. So, um, Tuscan Tower. All right, let's move on to the next one. So here's another view where we could be hanging out there if Julie would get all of us organized to go. <laughs> Tell me when. That's right. So I, I really want to be there. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's awesome. They grow um, Cab, Cab Franc, and Malbec in addition to the red blend. So like as far as going and visiting vineyards, mm -hmm. in their growing season, when is the best time to 
to go as far as like, do you want the grapes to still be on the vine so you can see them? Do you want them to have harvested or whatever so that we can taste what they're making? I would kind of want to go during harvest, okay, which would be our spring, okay, because they're the you know, the the, 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 the flip side, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and what a great time to go down, right? When you go down there in March or something and get down there for their harvest. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I, I turn 40 in March sounds like a plan, it does <laughs> sound like a plan. That'd be right after I turn 50. I just wish it was attractive. I don't understand why all these wineries have to be so ugly. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Hideous. Why would anybody go? Why would anybody wait and make wine? This is yeah. so terrible. I agree. It, it, time and again, right? You look it's at gorgeous. it and, and they're just so beautiful. So uh, let's go to the next one. All right. So I have no, um, no, that's next week. All right. So. We're talking about 90 to 92 points on this guy. So roughly calling it an outstanding wine of superior character and style. Um, you could go down below that, a very good wine with special qualities. Um, you could even go good, a solid, well-made wine, 80 to 84, or a classic wine. Um, so these guys you know uh, the the two people okay, we have okay so we're going to type in the chat box right so let's, let's what are your what's what, what are your scores what are your thoughts because uh, like i said you've seen the experts they're at 90 to 92 mm -hmm. 92 from susan hicks mm -hmm. Gwendolyn and laura 90 chris robin 92 to 94 mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles and Kiwi don't know yet. 91, 91. from Venezuela. Tucker's 92, 94. 89 for Paul. Wow, Brian's a big fan. I know. I, he's like, I mean, I still prefer whites, but this is really good. <laughs> it, right? It, it's a great wine. This is so much fun. I love this wine. So, see what I said was right then. The mm. people that aren't as much red drinkers, maybe it's, it, you know, it goes right. with them. It's. Because me, it's so smooth and balanced. It is. It's luscious with character. Mm -hmm. um, and it has plenty of character to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. But it's a luscious wine that is so easy to okay. enjoy. And I love that about it. So I, I really love that the Snyders put theirs in separately. They're only one point apart, but they didn't say 92, 93. Rachel is 93. David is 92. <laughs> right. So the... Um, the um, the Smith Dials. What are you guys eating with your uh, with your wine? You mentioned your pairing worked really well. Uh, we did steak with a um... Ma marinated skirt steak with a red pepper chimichurri. Oh yes, that good. sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's like roasted onions and stuff like that with it. That's fantastic. Very nice. Did anyone else pair anything with it? Yeah. Okay, the Hogsits. We had lamb and um, a couple of stir fried veggie dishes to go along with that. Like some greens and then purple potatoes. Yeah. Ooh, that Very sounds nice. good. I, I love like purple it. potatoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. even, after, even after opening this in the, uh, for an hour, the tannins were still pretty sharp yeah, when, we when we first put it them. in the glass, but after that, mm -hmm. it tamed right It down. opened right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, because it's it's very velvety now. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that it's been open for us for an hour. Yeah. So we, here we are. We we're hitting had, an hour mark. We just had this with while we were on here. So perfect. Which one is that one? You said how these are kind of what? It's the raw it's, honey. It's the raw honey one. Oh yeah, that would be really good. There's another one that we have called the Barcelona. Mm -hmm. That is um, a dark chocolate with smoked salt and oh. almonds, and that would be really good as well. That so, sounds good. It is good. <laughs> I get a, I get a question for you, Jeff. Yes, sir. Stop the, the fourth grape, the Bernarda. What can you tell us about that? And simultaneously, do they try to raisinate all the grapes? Do they kind of do them all the same way, or is it? sort of more more one grape that they try that with? Yes, um, to every description <laughs> I've seen, they raisinate them all evenly. So they put them all in there just in proportion. And Bonarda is a really cool grape that is largely seen from South America and California increasingly. Uh, Bonarda was widely used by um, monks 
And it is a very dark, supple, velvety, rich red. Um, very big berries. Hmm. So uh, um, we, and we have some Bonarda in the store. It tends to be kind of a luscious, big berry bomb kind of a wine, okay. which is not bad. It just is. Like you know. sweet or just? It's not sweet. It is technically dry, but it mm -hmm. has so much fruit to it that some people would accidentally call it sweet. Their, their brain would interpret it right. as sweet. Exactly, okay. because you're mm -hmm. getting big berries in there. Okay. So, um, so that's Bernarda, and it, it will add a big lusciousness. It does not take a lot of Bernarda to make an impression. Okay. And yeah. So that that's that kind of thing where you might get a little bit of, um, especially I can imagine raisinated, mm -hmm. probably a little bit of that that date quality. Okay. Yeah, and and prune almost mm -hmm. if you're getting a little prune, probably from the Bernarda fig. fig. Mm -hmm. Good go. Any other so, questions? So we, well, um, what, what's your rating? Oh, I was going to give it a 92. 92? Yeah, nice, nice. I really like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been, I've, I've really enjoyed this wine for years. Mm -hmm. um, and I <laughs> literally, since we began doing this, by the way, one week, it was our, the anniversary mm -hmm. fell in between our tastings. Uh -huh. Happy year of tasting, everybody. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> Year of wine of the week tastings. Uh, we're gonna keep it going, uh, going. And uh, but anyway, this was one of the first ones I wrote down. Oh really? Yeah. But um, at the time, because of the vid, right? Um, I didn't have a rep that I could work okay. with in order to get this wine in. So um, she's back. Welcome back, Holly. And um, and anyway, we jumped on it right away. So. Fantastic. I'm gl really glad you guys like it because I have always thought this mm -hmm. was this great, really interesting and delicious wine where it's got unique qualities. It is very easy to enjoy, but it has great character. I'm pointing at the bottle. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, that is a good sign. If she's saying, hey, Jeff, stop talking. Well, and normally he just does proactively it, it doesn't matter what we're drinking. He That's proactively true. is giving me more. Sometimes I scoot the glass away. I've only done that once, actually. Right. I scooted you, the glass away. And it was something everyone else really loved. And I was like, yeah, not so much. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. See, Jerry must have wondered if I would like this because he insisted that he come down and get the wine because he knew if I went to get it, I would buy two bottles of it. <laughs> yeah. Three. He says yeah, three. Been, <laughs> well, hey. You know, I know we ran into an issue with supply last week. Mm -hmm. That is not the case Good. with this wine. So we Good, have because we're eight. leaving for Boston Thursday, and I'll come get some more when I get back. Okay, we, we have plenty, and actually, I'm going to bring some more. Um, I have the ability to buy out this entire vintage, and ah. this is one of their better vintages, so I'm going to buy it all. Yeah. And then, I don't know if you noticed, but Kiwi said 90. 90, excellent. So... <laughs> Uh, and then the Smith Dials. That's right. <laughs> Debbie Downer. That's right. Debbie Downer. I, you know, because I, I think we did have one other, like 189 further up, but mm -hmm. I think. Well, was, I, my has also only been open for now four and a half minutes. So okay. I enjoy it. When I first felt it, I was like, it's going to change a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, because it is, it's this great spicy chocolate jumping mm -hmm. out of the glass right mm -hmm. now, now that it's been open an hour. It's like a black cherry chocolate with, but more of like, um, what's the word of mole? Oh, right. Really? Uh, that's a really, that's a really good call. Okay, David says right. yes. Wait, Linda, if you're talking to us, we can't hear you. You're muted. Sorry, yeah. I was going to say yes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> no. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah I would give it an easy yeah I I give it a ninety two. It's one of those things where you smell and you taste and you go, what was that? But mm -hmm. no, it's great that yes, mole. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. And honestly, it just hit me. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is this is you know there there is a live part of it. It's not just I you know I didn't write down wait to the end. And then, and then explain and bring it on everybody. <laughs> and then, but David wholeheartedly agreed too with the mole. So, well, that mm -hmm. makes me happy. Yeah. yeah. And this wine makes me happy. Thank you guys so, so I much. I gotta say, wait till the end. The Men in Black third season is gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, John just told me that wasn't funny. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. It was cute. Let's go on to uh, next week's wine, okay. and then we will get over to the after party. All right, one moment. And here all right, we go. so I just had this wine today, and Grace. I loved it. All right, I want to make so when we drank wine from Piedmont a long time ago now, Piedmont is northwest Italy. Okay. All right. So Northwest Italy, Piedmont. Um, it's where Barolo, Barbaresco, um, those guys are, um, which are heavy hitters in the pocketbook. But they have their Barberas and their Nebbiolas. So this is a Barbera that sees a decent amount of oak. Um, a lot of Barbera can be all stainless steel if it's the inexpensive style, which is still good, which kind of ends up being like cherries and roses. This has more going on with it. As soon as Holly poured it for me today, I thought, oh, this is going to be something good. And one of the Snyders said that's what Mike had in his glass. Yes, that is what Mike had in his glass today when Mike came in for um, for his, um, his, it was Mike's work anniversary today, six years at Tipples. So um, he had some delightful wine. So you, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the food pairings are exactly the same. So yeah, I leaned over to Rob and I was like, this is like, it's like copy and paste. Yeah, it was. This was copy and paste, but for a reason. Um, a, it was exactly the same thing listed, but B, because they are mimicking that Italian style, it is, it's literally the exact same or very similar food pairings on there. So I thought it was kind of fun to bring that up that here you have this Argentinian and you're jumping over to Northern Italy but it really does have almost the exact same food pairings uh, going for it. So um, it's absolutely, I, I tell you, I'm a huge fan of this wine. It's small production. I could not find a single rating for it, but I'll give it a rating because uh, I, I rate it delicious. And I, I think you guys are really love this wine and I look forward to sharing it with you guys next week. It's kind of one of my favorite things really when I, I have something where it's like, okay, Here's something that I fell in love with, and uh, and it's a, a style that we have not had. So, Barbera next week. So, um, I hope you guys will join us, and I really feel like you're going to love that wine. Let me jump over here. All right, so that brings us to the end of tonight's presentation. Let's uh, have a toast and finish up this wine and we'll we'll uh, go to the after party thank you so much we'll see you next week cheers yeah launch up cheers